Hi guys, it's me George, and today I'm going to do a book review on The Wicked Shall Decay, Charms, Spells and Witchcraft of Old Britain, a gathering of historical enchantments against foul spirits and maledictions, compiled and with an introduction by Andrew D. Mercer. And first and foremost, before I begin, I actually want to thank um, Andrew or Andy um, for sending me this book and offering to send me this book. That was an incredible um, honour. Um, to me, that, that was a great honour for you, for you to offer that and for you to do that. And I am incredibly, incredibly grateful. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Um, this book, I feel, um, as I was saying to a friend the other day, is as a, um, as a popular magician, as a British folk magician, whatever you want to say, as a, a folkloric witch, whatever, um, books like this, I feel, are what we need um, to have in order to preserve British folk magic, in order to keep that tradition alive. And I'm going to go into that at my talk at the Nameless Art Conference more, but um, it's, it's something that I feel really is important. And one of the things um, I want to say about this book is that this book is very different from any other kind of spell books that I've actually read before. Now, of course, we have the old gems. We have, um, you know, the abracadabra charm. You know, um, <clears throat> we have charms to cure warts. We have charms for two fake, things like that. Things that, as practitioners of folk magic or kind of researchers of folk magic, will probably know about. You know, we'll know the... Three ladies came from the east, you know, one brought fire, two brought frost, out with fire, in with frost, out with fire, in with frost, out with fire, in with frost, in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. You know, or the old two-fake charm where um, St. Peter's sat there and kind of in agony and Jesus walks by and kind of heals him and says, arise and be healed and, and stuff like that. And of course, these are gems, you know, that's not to dispute these old classics. And I call them the old classics because to me, that's what they are. Um, and I think that's not to dispute them because out of their legacy that they've created for folk magic, they, you know, they should have the utmost respect. But of course, there are other spells and other conjurations that we as historical folk magicians or folk folk magic practitioners want to kind of get hands on. You know, we want to kind of see the different spells. Um, and this book really does deliver that. Um, in this book, um, Andy says that, you know, there will be, uh, there won't be the sort of old classics for charming waltz or things like that. Um, rather, what will be in this book may be of more of a darker or a more considered like sinister nature um, of this book. There are spells that are slightly darker. Um, there are spells here to make a whole family flee a county. Um, you know, there are spells here that involve um, calling up the devil to keep someone safe in a, in a thunderstorm and, and things like that. And it's, it's really incredible. There are spells and charms here that I myself haven't actually ever seen before. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen these spells and charms and conjurations before. But the good thing about this book... The best thing about this book is that they are referenced. And it's one of the things, once again, me and my friend was kind of having a chat about the other day, that if you are going to create a book on historical folk magic and historical folk practice, then you need to supply the references to that. Because it's out of respect for the actual charms themselves and out of respect for just history, um, generally, um, it's good for people to know, okay, so what I'm doing, where, what county is this from? How old is this? You know, um, what, are there any variations that other people would have done that maybe I could gain some um, inspiration for? Things like that. And this spell does give references. So for me, that's one of the things that I thoroughly um, enjoyed about this book, that it does give references. Um, once again, there are, there are conjurations here that are very, very different and that I haven't actually seen um, before. Oh, there you are. To protect a person from a storm at sea. Um, it involves creating a wax image um, and you call up, you hold someone safe in the devil's name. Um, it's it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Some of the things here that I, I, I haven't seen, but they're referenced. So I can go off and research them and see where they're from. And so one of the things I feel as a... Um, as a folk magic practitioner, there are many reasons why British folk magic wasn't 
and isn't as preserved as other folk magic pr um, practices um, in the sense. Of course, we have uh, mass industrialization of farms and stuff like that, machinery coming in, taking away jobs that there would have been older charms for, things like that. Um, you know, machines to churn butter and whatnot, you know, things like that. Um, there are, you know, there was the World War, there was things like that. And, and Andy goes into this, you know, he does go into this um, talking about um, why British folk magic may have been a little bit lost along the way. Now, of course, there are um, some, there are, you know, elements of folk magic that have been kept, that have been preserved, you know, that a lot of people still do to this day. Um, that have been saved, you know, and there are many other reasons as to why um, British folk magic wasn't, um, hasn't been as preserved of, as other traditions. But to me, despite the fact this book is, um, some, most of the magic is from the 1800s, um, but despite, and despite the fact that people in that time were literate and they could read and write, um, but to me, one of the reasons I feel um, is also um, literacy and I feel that in order to preserve British folk magic for me um, in my personal humble opinion write stuff down you know I feel like a lot of a lot more stuff needed to be written down and this I feel is one of the um, important factors of it so anybody who writes a book like this um, I take my hat off to you you know another this book is fabulous and another fabulous book very similar to this, is Graham King's Charms and Spells, the British book of witchcraft. Um, the British book of Charms and Spells, even, by Graham King. Um, and one of the things I feel, um, these books, to me, help keep alive that element of British folk magic. They help preserve them. By being written down, by their, their legacy being read and then being copied, um, you know, uh, produced loads and, and there are loads of different copies fly loads of copies flying out of the same book the same material um, this to me is how we can help preserve British folk magic so anybody that does this anybody that writes a book like this or similar to this I fully um, take my hat off to you um, the other thing I found about this book um, was that once again as I said there are spells here that were very very different um, very, very different spells, very different conjurations and charms. But I also liked how the author went into the um, the horseman's word and went into that secret society um, and then also went on to the toad bone ritual as well. So there were elements there of old folk witchcraft um, and there were elements there also um, of kind of different variations of the rituals and things like that. The other thing I feel um, that I found really, really good was that in the appendix there is a um, there is a short article on the cunning man of Hadley, um, James Cunning Mural, who was an Essex cunning man. That's um, a his mural's hand drawn version of Francis Barrett's The Magus. So there's that, and then that's James Mural's one. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of material that was just destroyed um, from his working book, so there's there's very little that people actually have. Um, if I think I believe it is only that page as well, which is really sad. But James Connemural is is a character very similar in the sense of quite similar to Cecil Williamson, not in terms of practice, but in terms of, and not in terms of viewpoints, but in terms of the um, they are characters that both contributed quite a lot to folk magic and helped keep folk magic preserved in the sense of them just being and existing. Um, they are characters that really kind of help preserve that, that go unnoticed, that don't go, you know, they, they are unnoticed in a sense. They take a back step when really they, they had a massive, quite a big effect on British folk magic and British witchcraft. Um, so seeing an article written about James Cunning Mural for me was actually genuinely um, quite uplifting, quite nice, you know. Um, so yeah, this book um, is by Freehands Press. Um, it's written by Andrew D. Mercer. 
Um, and if you are interested in old witchcraft, if you are interested in old folk magic, and you're looking for you know spells and conjurations and charms that are a little bit different, um, go for this book. But even if you're not, go for this book because this book holds some really potent information and charms and spells in it. Very useful. Um, very, very interesting. So definitely give this book a read. Um, I highly, 110% recommend this book. Um, and I, I think anybody, it's, it's a gem. It is a rare gem. And I think this book is fantastic. The author actually um, kind of bases this book on the idea of older um, black books of folk magic that were said to have, have disappeared, such as The Secret Granary and The Devil's Plantation. And the owner, through this, has kind of recreated a black book, a working black book, of what he feels would have been um, within these books. Um, so in a sense, it is a black book. It's not a black book in appearance, but inside, it's a black book. You know, um, it's, it's a fantastic... It's a fantastic book, it's a fantastic idea as well, and it's completely different. And it's backed up by references. There are references for the charms and conjurations that are said. So, yeah, that's my book review. Over and out. Peace. Take care, guys.